The year was 1970. The Lockheed TriStar and the Grumman Tomcat both made their maiden flights. Apollo 13 had a problem, but got safely back to Earth. The Soviet Union landed a spaceship on Venus, and Dana won the Eurovision Song Contest for Ireland. Meanwhile, over in England, Paul McCartney leaves the Beatles, and a wedge-shaped microcar for the groovy young driver goes on sale. It has two seats, three wheels, no doors, and only comes in bright orange. Today, thanks to FX, the Bond bug is back. Find out more right here on Gary's Stuff. Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel. Welcome back if you've been here before. Today, I'm having a look inside the box of the Bond Bug. It's a vintage classics release, just made available by Airfix again after a gap of just the 48, yes, 48 years. It's a 130 second scale kit, has 64 parts and, Airfix say, has broken all records for pre-orders. Part of that must be because it took so long for them to re-release it. Anyway, I'll have a quick look at the history of the car first, and then we'll dive down into the kit and see what you get for your money. In a few days' time, I'll show you how to make it. Well, how will you know when that video comes out? Of course, what you can do, subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you get notified of all my future videos as they are published. And of course, anything you like on this show, please do remember, Imperial Thumbs Up, on the like button below. And if you want to give a bit more concrete support, you can do that through Super Thanks by becoming a channel member or by using any of my online partner programs. One of these is the Airfix Affiliate Program. Now, if you want to buy a Bond Bug or indeed anything else in your Airfix or Humbrol ranges, then click on the link in the information box below. Then anything you buy there, no matter what it is, at no extra cost to you, FX will make a donation to the running of this channel. And of course, you can still get your FX Club discount and you can still collect your hobby reward points from Hornby if you're on those schemes. OK, then, let's make a start and have a brief look at the history of the Bond bug. The Bond Bug was a small two-seat car designed in the late 1960s as a fun three-wheeler aimed squarely at a young audience. It had no doors, rather a lift-up front canopy and side screens. At the time it cost £629, a few pounds more than a basic Mini and equivalent to around £12,500 today. The Bond Bug was designed by Tom Caron from Ogle Designs, the man behind other concepts such as the Reliant Scimitar sports car and the Raleigh Chopper bicycle. He was commissioned by the Reliant Motor Company to create a sporty version of the existing Reliant Regal. Originally given the name Reliant Rogue, the car was never produced. However, when Reliant acquired Bond cars in 1969, Karen was asked to alter the Rogue's design to create the Bond Bug. The Bug had a front-mounted 700cc engine of 29 horsepower. The body was made from bright orange fiberglass and it sat on a metal chassis. Sitting low down gave the driver a go-kart-like impression of speed, although the car could actually only reach 76 miles per hour, 122 kilometers per hour. Although slightly faster than the basic Mini, the Bug was much slower through corners due to its tricycle wheel layout. Launched in 1970, the Bond Bug had a production run of just four years, during which time 2,270 cars were made, including the more powerful Bug 750. Today, they are the subject of much adoration from their fans, with many having been carefully restored. So here's the box. Um, classic Roy Cross artwork on the front here. You know, that is just so evocative, not only of the car, but of the era as well, the, the age, the early 70s. Amazing. Of course, now it comes as a vintage classic, which is fine. On the side here, just a little bit of 
blurb about the car very much points out the molds were made in 1971 artwork in 1971 90 millimeters long 43 millimeters wide and 64 pieces um, side view of the bond bug in orange because that's the color it came in apart from six or seven um, special promotional cars color call outs here for the paints that would be needed including one for the figure and here skill level one so it can be built by pretty much anybody at all can build this and it comes with a token for one flying hour now if you're a member of the ethics club you can collect these towards a free kit in the future if you're not a member of the club or you are a member of the club and you don't want to collect them please do consider giving these to models for heroes you can post them to them they'll turn them into kits that help people dealing with mental health issues as a result of their service to our country be that through the military or by first responders really really good charity more information about that is in the information box below this screen okay let's um, open up the box then and see what's inside So usual fare, we have a big plastic bag um, with some frames, old, old style frames as you can see, a figure, the driver, one, two, about three or four frames, we'll have a better look in a minute, and another bag with the transparent frames. And then we have the instruction leaflet in here, and the decal sheet as well now we'll have a look at all of these bits in a bit more detail so this first frame here consists of the actually sort of bottom half of the, the, the bucket of the car and the canopy this sort of sits here and sort of folds up and down to let people in it's another frame which is uh, this is like the bottom part that covers the chassis really and this is the the uh, rear mud front or the rear covers the wheels, bits of chassis member. Oh, you get you actually get an engine as well, a bit of an engine anyway. Here we have some wheels and springs, bits of suspension, bits of the interior, and so on and so forth. And here we have a few other bits and pieces: drive shafts, exhaust, radiator, and you can see from the hands the driver figure had come off the frame so the driver would normally be on there and that come off the frame that is why we have plastic bags containing the parts so that can fall off if it does um, it's not the end of the world doesn't look like there's any real damage to it that can't be fixed so it's not actually not a badly molded figure and then we have the frame with the clear parts the uh, flaps on the side doors they do have a a definite sort of rippled effect to them because remember these were screens they weren't actually proper windows as such they would have been rippled like this which is a nice touch headlamps and so on and so forth very nice actually really nice transparent sections there uh, the instructions are pretty much um as you'd expect from from ethics normally these days so the front you've got a history of the car brief little essay little paragraph or two about the car in five different languages english french german spanish and swedish there's some general assembly instructions in many many languages there's translations of the icons which are quite important down here and then you have the instructions themselves it's like a a4 double gatefold size and the instructions are actually they tend to use the original artworks and then just add in modern arrows and numbered bits and pieces um, just because they're a bit clearer also they do add in some color call outs where necessary otherwise these are actually pretty much basically the same instructions that you used to get Back in the day, of course, you'd actually have verbal or, or written instructions as well as the diagrams. But 
there's nothing here that looks terribly complicated, I have to say. And then the other part of it is the scheme, which you might think is a bit superfluous, things basically it's just orange, but it does give you where all the decals should go. Um, the, the one that's sort of vague, there's, there's two number plates, the Bug 700 and EV589. Uh, the thing here, there's, there's options. You can either use this decal, which includes the logo here, or you can paint that panel, and then you just need the yet orange bits of the logo, which is quite cool. Um, nice touch, they've put the road fund license tax disc there as well. Very good. The I'm kind of looking at the instructions and what I don't see, and which is a pity, is um, anything for the speedometer. But let's have a look at the decal sheet anyway and see what's on there. So this is the, um, the decal sheet. You can see the two car registrations here. Um, you can see this is what I meant by the alternative panel. This is like the whole black panel on the back with the orange logo in. Or you can paint the black panel yourself if you prefer, and then they've just supplied the orange logo on its own, which is a nice touch, I think. Um, there's the Road Fund license um, tax disc, as it used to be called. Uh, this is something to do with the fuel, I think. Yep. Yeah something or how many octane it, it back back in the day when you had octane racings that you had to stick to really for engines they would they would tell you what octane you needed um you know five star and things like that and then some surrounds for the windows and then the uh, stripe that goes over the back end and that's basically it and in terms of sharpness you really can't fault these decals these um cartograph decals i mean this is a 0.5 millimeter diameter pencil here. I can see this bit on the road fund tax disc, which says April 72, is probably 0.3, not 0.3 of a millimeter at all. Perfectly readable. Excellent job, beautifully printed. That's it then, the Bond bug is back. Don't forget to tune in to find out how to build one of these if you've got one on the way. How are you going to know when that's published? Of course, what you'll do is subscribe to the channel, hit that bell, and you get notified of all my content as it becomes available. And of course, anything you like on the channel, please, imperial thumbs up on the button below because every like counts. Thank you so much for watching. Hope to see you again very soon. Take care now. Goodbye.